One of the sad realities we face as gamers is that we all eventually have to have a job. I mean, unless you're some kind of genius that can go count cards in Las Vegas, you gotta eventually spend your time making that sweet scratch. And for you, Gamerites really wants to spend some time talking about 10 things gamers with jobs hate. Number 10. Making an absolute ton of money. Knowing that you can afford an absolute ton of games. Especially around that Steam sale time of year. Oh hey, I don't have time to do this. I have to work. I have to sleep. Why don't you play video games anymore? Oh, I do everything I can. I want to play them. Look at all these games I bought. You have to know how much I want to play them. I didn't spend this money for no reason. Like the games themselves aren't trophies. The trophies within the games are. And I can't get to them. Like my boss wants this report on his desk on Monday. What am I supposed to do? Do my work, I guess. Number 9. Giving up multiplayer games in favor of single player games due to the time investment required to be proficient at them. Multiplayer games are very rewarding experiences, and I feel like that's because they take a long time to learn, and even longer to master. The time investment to get your skills to a level that is considered proficient, as well as learning the culture and community of the game itself, makes embedding yourself a difficult prospect. It takes a long time. A single player game, on the other hand, just takes a little while to teach you how to play it and then drops you into its narrative. Or if it's not a narrative driven game, it's sandbox. Whatever. It doesn't matter. You're ready to play. This is you playing the game. You don't have to invest time in order to stop yourself from doing something stupid. You just go do something stupid. It's fine. There's nobody bullying you because you're a noob. Not that that's really an appropriate thing for people to do. Number eight, being extremely excited about a game and trying to talk about it to coworkers. As much as a lot of people play video games now, not everybody does. And like you, everybody else at work has less time than they'd like. A lot of people choose to spend that time with their quote unquote families. Huh, who needs, who needs that, right? <laughs> it's so sad. <clears throat> oh, um, yeah, let's just back off that. So anyway, you try to tell your coworker at the water cooler about how great your level 13 cleric is. And they just look at you and say, there's just no clerics in the NFL. I don't want to talk about this. Number seven, having to schedule your gaming. It's Saturday, 1 p.m. I have nothing to do. I've eaten, I've cleaned, and I'm ready. Well, I've been looking forward to this all week. It's time to go hang out in a post-apocalyptic world or something. You don't even get to choose if you're in the right mood. So I'm not always in the mood to play a video game. Sometimes I'm tired. When I play games, I like to be sharp. I like to not be thinking, oh man, I could be doing this better. I like to be at the top of my game. And if I've been working my ass off all week, I don't know if I'm gonna be. Also, you just sound like you're kind of not cool. It reminds me of the song, It's Five O'Clock Somewhere. People don't like work. Number six, skipping important cutscenes. Because you need more time to play. Ultimately, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get the most out of the game. You're trying to get as far as you can. You're trying to meet some milestones. We're not always able to do that. But as somebody with limited time due to their work, sometimes you have to forego the important parts of the narrative in order to get somewhere with your time. I'm somebody who plays games for narrative. I love story. But I also know how to basically get the point. And once I've gotten the point, if I'm strapped for time, I need to move on. And that sucks, because it detracts from my experience. Number five, sacrificing sleep to play games. If you're not a big fan of the whole scheduling your gaming hours idea, and let's be frank, I'm not. Sometimes you just decide, well, you know what's more important than sleep? This. And you just go until you can't go anymore. Can't go to sleep yet. Got relics to collect, enemies to defeat. I got so much to do. Before you know it, it's 3 a.m. and you can't even keep your eyes open anymore. You know you're going to feel like crap the next day, but you also know that this is why you're doing it. Or at least partially why. Number four, waking up in the morning after that long night of gaming. We talked about being up pretty late. Now we're gonna talk about how great that coffee smells. Cause you're like, oh, maybe I should have slept. But that's what it sounds like in your head anyway. If you say it, it's more like, oh, I should have slept. You are the walking dead. You go into work and people are like, what happened to you? Are you sick? And you're like, yeah, sick at headshots. And they're like, Okay? You sit down in your cubicle or other working environment. If you don't work in an office, you start pressing buttons on that keyboard and you're reminded, I've used this for other things. And you suddenly realize what kind of alternate dimension you feel like you're in. What am I doing here? 
every day. I feel like crap and it's all because I'm here making money for some rich jerk who already has money. Why can't I just do things that I enjoy with my life? Why? Number three, playing multiplayer tired. Now this is a little bit different than going to your job tired. You don't hate doing this. You hate how bad you are at doing this. Playing multiplayer tired is a little bit like drunk driving. The major difference is that nobody gets killed when you're tired gaming. And I mean nobody. That trigger finger is way behind. Also, it's not morally wrong to play multiplayer games tired. You're not really affecting other people. Unless you're on a team. But you're not affecting them in the way that you would be if you were drunk driving. Why am I talking about drunk driving? Anyway, it's really, really not fun to see those statistics at the end of the match when you ain't had a nap. Nice little sabbatical in the middle of the day. Or just didn't sleep last night. Cause you know. You're you. You like the games. Can't stop it. But we all do. We understand. No judgment here. I'm just really tired. I just, I'm starting to think that camping might be the right way to go. Number two, having to skip big open world games because you know you're not going to finish them. I mean, you're paying 60 bucks for that game. You know that you put the work in to earn it. And you also know you're probably not going to put the work in to finish it. It's sad. I mean, really sad. Because honestly, I'd like to play every open world game. I'd like to start them, then eat or sleep maybe a couple times, and then get done. You've got a routine you've got to stick to, and you've got to push gaming itself in. People who have to work instead of play open world games at this point in time are really missing out. Open world games are getting to be at their peak, so to speak. A lot of them are reaching the absolute epitome of what an open world game should be. And to think that it may evolve even further than that, shock and astounds. It's just too bad. It's just too bad. And finally, number one, hardcore gamers who unfortunately have to get used to playing casual games because that's what they have time for. This is not to poo-poo on casual games. I play Clash of Clans and Bejeweled Blitz every single day, and it's just a nice way to calm the nerves, reset, and all that. Fortunately, my schedule allows me to play video games. In fact, I'm not sure if you noticed. I'm kind of encouraged to by work. But there are people who only have time for a round of Bejeweled Blitz, or Zuma, or really whatever. The ultimate goal here is simply just playing video games, and it's hard to fault someone for that. So anyway, while you're thinking about this stuff, why not leave a comment? Tell us what about these you agree with, or if you have your own experiences. We want to hear them. Also, don't forget to click the like button, it helps us more than you can possibly imagine. And finally, make sure you subscribe to our channel. We upload videos every single day, and the absolute best way to see them first is a subscription. Thank you so much for watching this one, and as always, we will see you next time on Game Ranks.